surreal. Um, the camp has been really well calculated. Um, definitely worked on everything I possibly could, um, mentally, physically, emotionally, you know. Uh, had a lot of really good ups with all of this. Um, definitely reached my highest highs. Ready to go in there. I'm really excited. There's so much on the line here. I mean, obviously, an opportunity to fight for the title, an opportunity to coach on the Ultimate Fighter. Do you let yourself think about those possibilities as motivation, or do you have to kind of dial it back and only think about what's right in front of you? I, you know, it's impossible to not think about that. You know, um, I feel like, in a way, this is almost like my way of getting a fight into the fighter house. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, just like all these other fighters are coming in, mine's just a little bit more high profile and, you know, a lot, a lot more at stake. So, yeah, we're fighting to get into the fighter house, which once you're in the fighter house, you know, then you have another fight. And uh, so, I don't know, it, it all seems like how I would have thought if women's MMA was ever going to get into MMA, like maybe we would have to come up to the Ultimate Fighter House. So, you know, it's all a, a little bit backwards to what I imagined, but it's totally cool. Everything is just happening exactly the way it's supposed to. I love it. How do you feel like you're being treated by, you know, the casual fans know Misha because of the time in Strike Force. Mm -hmm. they, they really don't probably don't know you. They haven't seen a lot of your fights. Do you feel like you're being disrespected or kind of written off at all? That, you know, because it seems like some people are anticipating Misha and Ronda and that sort of thing. No, I, I feel like people are quiet and don't really know what to do with me, you know, because if, if you look me up on paper, you know, obviously I'm 7-0 and, and and that says something. Um, and then, you know, you, you watch my fights and you see they're exciting and, and I'm very explosive and I'm really confident and I know I train hard, I don't cut any corners and, you know, I can always guarantee an exciting fight. Um, I just think people don't know what to think and, and that's really cool because all that all that does is leave it, everyone with an open mind and, and me to fill it with, with whatever it is that I bring on Saturday. Do you feel pressure at all? Like, how is how is to go to this first fight? Pressure. It's exciting. Um, it's never been about like uh, the fight card for me. You know, it's never been about the opponents for me. It's always been about personal accomplishment. You know, um, I, I want to be the best at everything I apply myself to. That could be cooking. That could be parenting. That could be going out and uh, snowboarding or I don't know anything along those lines. Teaching. I, I absolutely just I I, I want to do my best at everything and, and always feel that pride that I, I never could have walked away having done better. So, so this is about personal accomplishments for me. It's about, you know, reaching my highest high. And, um, you know, the pressure is, is something, you know, it's, it's a... I don't know. It's, it's not real unless you let it be real. You know, pressure is something you put on yourself. So I use all of this as, as a lot of fuel for my fire, the adversity that comes from not being well-known and, and people possibly doubting me or, or favoring me. You know, that's their prerogative, and, and I'm just here to fight. You know, I'm just here to go out there and do what I love to do because it's fun. And that's why I'm here. Put on a good show to kind of build on the momentum of the Ronda fight. So important, you know, because like they had an excellent performance. They did a really, really good job, and and now it's time to continue to show the fans, maybe the ones that weren't bought over by the first show, that that we have a lot to bring. You know, I think that this is definitely some of the best talent that will be seen in the UFC history. You know, girls have a lot more to bring that hasn't been seen before, based on you know our center of gravity is different, our intensity is different. Um, you know, just our, our overall skills, our, our, our change, you know, I mean, a lot of moves that wouldn't work for guys sometimes work for girls and vice versa. So I think it's a good change of pace and it'll be definitely a nice new scene. What was it like for you to actually get the call from the UFC to become part of the bantamweight division? Um, it was it was staggering. Um, at first, I felt, um, and I was like, "Wow, wow, what an opportunity! This is this is super cool." So now what? You know, like I, I was just told to be ready by April, and it's like, okay, so do I take a vacation? Do I do I start training now? Do I do I call my friends and family? Like, what? I don't know what to do. And um, you know, immediately I was just I was just overwhelmed and excited. And I couldn't believe that I had been chosen, but I knew I'm the right one for the job. So I just, a very big sense of accomplishment because I know that I'm coming out here and I'm a very good person to come out and represent exactly what we're going to do here on Saturday night. Both of you and Misha are both very strong wrestlers. Do you think that you have an edge over her wrestling with the style that you bring? Or? Um, I think that my style is very unorthodox. You know, there's the standard wrestling, there's 
um, you know, taking people down and, and getting those positions that you see in, you know, collegiate wrestling and freestyle and all of that. But um, throughout the years of, of me wrestling, I've had to really adapt a style of my own that is, is pretty funky and just really uncoordinated looking. And it, it ends up me working out and figuring out how to be on top and end up in good positions. You know, something that you really can't train for. You know, so I think, um, I, I guess my, my confidence in, in my clumsiness, you know, always comes into play. And um, just that I, I know when I'm focused and I'm, and I'm aggressive and I'm moving forward and I'm making sure that it's my style that I'm implementing and it's my ring control, that, yeah, it's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And, and I'm excited for all of that to, to definitely be in the spotlight. One of the favorite things I've read about you so far is that you said sometimes you get in there and you actually abandon your game plan and just go with your instincts. How often does that happen for you? And for this fight, are you really, really structured with the game plan? Or Absolutely not. No, I, I gave up on game plans after my like fifth sorries to my coaches for not doing what they told me to do in my fights. Um, I continue to go in, you know, even in between rounds. I've, I've gone in and I've been, I've been doing well at something and I get into the corner and my coaches will be like, you're doing great here keep doing that and I'm like oh, okay you know and I'll go out and I'll just completely abandon what they said and they're just like oh, no 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 that's fine you did good you did good you know um, but this round you know make sure you no, yeah it doesn't work it never works my brain kind of just falls out my ear and my instincts just take over and and my heart is what wins me these fights Carrie, you brought up an interesting point um new eyes on female MMA fighting. Um, if you wanted to see the first fight, you had to pay for it. Mm -hmm. This is the first female fight that's going to be viewable to everyone. Is that something you're kind of feeling? Yeah, I think it's really cool because, you know, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, we're both classy girls. Um, we really enjoy doing this sport. We come from having having worked hard for a really long time, way before MMA even started for women. And, um, you know, just followed our passion and followed our journey. And we're women on a mission. And, and I think that all plays out on its own in in the fact that people aren't going to have to pay to see this, that it's actually going to be something that if they choose to watch, they can just flip over and check it out and see. You know, they don't have to completely commit to, to paying for a pay-per-view. They can just really uh, be curious, go over and look at it, and I think that it's going to be something that's going to wow them as soon as they allow their curiosity to come out and, and click into the, the channel. Dating back a couple of years now, Misha was kind of the first big-name female fighter that was really lobbying. You know, women should be in the UFC. She, she did a bunch of stuff on Twitter and, and the internet. I'm wondering if back then, in that time, were you following kind of her campaign, and, and what, what did you think of her at that time? I actually wasn't. Um, I, I don't really follow... I like to watch fights and I like to fight. Um, I don't really follow um, MMA too much. I, I don't. I don't get up and, and revisit fights and, and watch people unless it was something amazing that I saw that I really want to learn and implement into my own game. You know, so um, I really support women's MMA and especially the growth and evolution of it. But um, I have really, like I said, it's been a personal journey of my own. When I saw that MMA existed, I just wanted to do it. I was like, what is that? I want to try that. You know, that looks like wrestling, but it's dirty. And you get to do all kinds of stuff that you'd get in trouble for and disqualified for in wrestling. So, you know, I just thought that, that it was, you know, the ultimate sport of will versus will and the ultimate challenge and really just uh, something that I wanted to get into. And now that the evolution of women has come up, now I'm definitely excited for the women like I want to make history to help pave that path for the women I feel like we all got here together you know putting on good fights you know training our hearts out going out there and and putting it in there with the guys and and uh you know making sure that we make it all the way up to fight date making weight having all these things that you have to sacrifice as a woman in order to belong here you know it was something we did together so I feel a really big sense of comrade uh camaraderie here where um before it was just a hobby i just really wanted to get in here and fight you know Cat guys, anybody? This may seem like it's coming completely out of left field, but if, if there were a 125 pound division, you'd be fighting there. What, what, what I did. I, I, I fought at 125, yeah. and um, it was a really huge cut for me. I, um, yeah, I mean, I'm having a cut, a pretty big cut for this fight as well. But I fought at 125 for 
a while because I wanted to, uh, I really wanted to learn how to fight there. You know, I was, I was taking Muay Thai, I was doing wrestling, I was doing jiu-jitsu and everything. Um, but I knew if I made that bigger cut, I would be the bigger fighter and the, the risk would be less because the girls I would be fighting against don't really cut as much weight as me. So, you know, I could easily make more mistakes that were recoverable and still be able to figure out how to win a fight. And uh, now that I feel like I'm more rounded and that I have more skills and a lot more confidence in ring control, that I can come up to a more natural weight for me and I can go and dominate there as well. I did really well at 125 and I expect to do the same at 135. And then when I'm done making weight for 135, I would love to go up to 145 and be able to eat whatever I want every day. <laughs> Thank you guys.